too Somebody bad. Somebody in the Discord was like, "Oh, well, you can't, you can't take a full squad of Galvor back in a Spartan with Argyll Tall." And I'm like, "Why the fuck not?" And they're like, "Well, because they're bulky." I'm like, "Yeah, they're bulky too. So ten of them is twenty, and Argyll Tall is bulky three, so that's twenty three. So you still have room to throw a, a chaplain in there too." You could put a fucking Terminator chaplain in there if you wanted and to. Baby, like, you got a stew going. <laughs> baby, you got oh, a stew. And they're like, oh, I still thought they were 16. And I was like, where is that math coming from? When was it ever 16, number one? And number two, where the fuck is that math coming from? People are confused, man. I'll tell you. Yeah, people get confused like that. It'd be like that. Heresy players don't know how to read confirmed. Reading is heresy. <laughs> you're not wrong yeah I mean you get some people who thought that dreadnoughts immobilized themselves on terrain last edition yeah. well, you, but you know what doesn't immobilize itself on terrain this is another episode of the Argyle Talk podcast and dreadnoughts Why did he and say dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts. <laughs> um, welcome and back everybody 18 wheeler <laughs> uh, we are back after our uh, I don't even want to say hiatus because we just don't record this shit anymore. But we are back after our vision the quest. Open. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So much peyote. Uh, we're also back after our uh, <laughs> our uh, five finger death punch concert that we left halfway through. <laughs> oh man. man. To be uh, fair, we saw everything we went to see. It's true. <laughs> We saw the who. And I almost... We saw Megadeth. And hold on, who is who is the other headliner? I took a took a screenshot of their the, the other opener. Yeah, Power of God, Flame Fire of God, from, Fire from the Gods. Okay, yeah, they were they were pretty good. They're all right. Yeah. I'm assuming that's where like the stompy bit came from. <laughs> the stompy bit just came from fucking me. Just, no, just it's just the way that the way that we felt. That's just how. Like, that, that's oh, because it is that guy do he? He was doing that a couple of times. Oh, Did see, he? I didn't even oh, see yeah. that. I wasn't even watching. Oh my god! Yeah, I think I think Ben needed a reboot after uh, Holy Wars. After we did mm. the Stompy Mosh Mosh Circle for the bridge, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It was pretty great. I, lo I loved I loved looking up and watching the people behind us. They wanted to watch the show and then they just physically couldn't. <laughs> They're just like, what are these jackasses? We were doing? standing behind a support pillar anyway. Why the fuck were they standing behind us? Are you, like are you talking about the support pillar for the amphitheater or Grey? Both. Oh. I'm the emotional support pillar. Yeah, Grey Grey is the support pillar for this group. <laughs> Emotional support pillar. He's the glue that support holds us together. Of the community. It's just because he's the stickiest. Oh, here, Gray. <laughs> By the way, I have your um, Deradeo bits. Um, oh, shit. I I'm glad that it blurred that out because it looks like I'm holding something obscene. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we know you said Deradeo bits. It's that definitely is. not cocaine, kids. Um, did find out. Uh, I don't know if this uh, cools your jets on it at all, but somehow I ended up with two left auto cannons like it's not a left and a right auto cannon it's just two left auto cannons so you're none Deradeo with left auto cannon <laughs> <laughs> none if, dreadnought with left cannon and and as I mentioned the arachnus battery does not have the like cables and shit so like I don't know yeah. where I got these bits from but They've if you still chilling. want them yeah man um, I will put them to use but uh, yeah, so what's everybody been working on after after Nova or since Nova, That's or if you worked on stuff before Nova, times. that counts too. Oh yeah, I've worked on plenty of stuff. So I've got I've gotten all sorts of Night Lords done. Um, basically, everything in that army is finished now, except for the ten plasma bikes I have to redo um, or do that I replaced. So all my terror squads are all done. Recon Marines, my Night Raptors, they which all came out pretty good. Um, I've been revitalizing my World Eaters at last because uh, I'm going to bring those to Call to Arms. Ben had printed me some Phalax Blades because Rampagers can't take Chain Axes anymore. So I had to replace those. 
And now I'm working on the the end stages of a Proteus that Ben imprinted me. Nice. And that, and once I do that, I will every World Eater model that I own will be painted. Hell yeah, that's better than I can fucking say. Um, speaking of which, as as a quick side note, um, Call to Arms, uh, Clarion Hotel in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, what is that, Ben? October seventh to ninth. Yep, October seventh to ninth. The uh, where I am running a thirty k narrative event. Um, and if you've gone to any of the uh, the Williamsburg events before, this will be very similar. Um, hopefully, with some cool twists this year because it's a continuing narrative from what I did in February. Um, but uh, and that'll be on Saturday the eighth. Um, so I'll be going up that Thursday to uh, help get set up. And you know, there's usually a few people out there, so hang out uh then uh give uh outback a false sense of security because we're usually nice that night uh, we're nice every night at outback <laughs> um but yeah doing a uh, a three game 2500 point narrative event on saturday um the, uh, i did put in a couple of restrictions even though it's a new edition um but like mech will be allowed um and you know knight armies are technically allowed um i didn't actually put a, a restriction on them but i did restrict lords of war and uh oh well, i said lords of war so yeah no i guess knight armies aren't allowed now that i think about it uh and primarchs <laughs> but uh there's gonna the as of today the 11th uh we are at let me see we are at 29 registered for 32 spots um if if we can get a few people uh, if we can get a few extras i'll see about uh extending the uh the table allotment no um, i just got to make sure that i have the materials to cover that but we're looking pretty good so far i'm really looking forward to it this is our first uh, like actual convention that we are running uh, myself and a couple of other uh, gamers from the area. Um, the convention's not new, but it was being dropped by the uh, the organization that was running it previously, and we decided like we we thought it was kind of silly to just drop it. Uh, like it it could be really good, it could be beneficial for the area and the various games that are run here. So right, I mean it's it's like a you know semi annual thing twice a year there's this heresy event in Williamsburg and it's been doing that for a while. So like no reason to start from the ground up with something. Yeah, exactly. So it, we, we, we kept it, we kept the name. Um, we're keeping some of the key people that were volunteers um, and we're trying to run, uh, we're trying to expand the game listing and the official events. So we've got a heresy event, bolt action, age of Sigmar. There is a war Warhammer army project event uh, that we're trying to push. Uh, that's kind of a, uh an experiment um then we're going to have other games being demoed like um uh, star wars armada battletech infinity gaslands is going to be back out there they always do a good job of bringing just a lot of cool terrain and a lot of cool uh th um like drag race and you know, death race events we do have some vendors working on a couple of more uh that are interested in coming down so far everything's been going real well it's just a lot more planning and logistics on the back end than i guess i originally expected but it's been fun it's been interesting as it, so, as it okay. do i'm just so now that, that is a different organization than the muster and just happens to be at the same place question mark it was yeah, so it, it was the same people uh there's a there's a local gaming group called the old dominion military society and they are they're primarily um focused on historical games so like you've been to the muster and stuff before that's kind of the, the main shtick um they decided that call to arms was not uh just not something they wanted to pursue it wasn't profitable enough wasn't you know a, you know attaining the goals that they set forth whatever um and myself and a couple of other people got together and were like well we can take it if they're not going to use it anymore we'll take it over will try to focus on an expanded uh you know type of game selection and you know reach out to the the contacts that we have in the community and see what we can do so this year is very much a um a proof of concept if we can 
you know, break even or make money, then I think that that's a pretty good indication that this is something that can you know, be done year over year. And it gives, you know, our gaming system a, a home, you know, something that's relatively local that, you know, for people that can't, you know, go to some of the bigger events, you know, outside of the state or even the Nova Open for that matter. Like it gives people in our area something that they can, they can work towards and actually have an event that they can go to that's not just the local game store. Yeah. So if you're in Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina area, and you haven't signed up for Call to Arms October 8th yet, Heresy event, what are you doing, man? Three Stavats left. Let's do it. Um, we've got some great prize support. I think uh, we normally oh, yeah, have the KR Multicase as a sponsor. Um, this year I've also got, um, not because of any, well, I guess, do we want to talk about the the prize support that we were talking about the other day? Well, we got a we've got a couple, and some of it I'm not quite ready to divulge yet because there's sure. still some details. But uh, we've been very fortunate in that we've had some uh, some of the local vendors uh, donate some stuff. We actually uh, got some some stuff uh, some, uh, some consideration from Games Workshop. Uh, looks like we are going to get some consideration from KR Multicase, uh, the Baron of Dice. Um, if you've ever used any of uh, his dice, uh, is looking to uh, send some stuff down. Um, got uh, oh, got some uh, got some stuff right here actually from a dirty down game or the Goblin's Hut. Um, but it's some dirty down. Uh, let's see what I got. Some washes here. Um, I've never used them, but I'm told on good authority that they're fantastic. But uh, we got some moss, rust, and I think the verdigree. Yep. Mm -hmm. The uh, I think the those are the three I've seen. Yep. Um, um yeah, so we'll be we'll be giving away a best weathered uh award. Um I'll be doing my best painted award uh with some personal prize support. It's not a sponsor, but it's a good product that I like that I just happen to come into some of. Um yeah. and uh also be giving away haven't haven't finalized you know doing it as a quote unquote sponsored thing i think it'd be funny too but uh the coveted roll piss award uh that i started last time <laughs> uh and then whatever you know so we got some good prize support it'll be worth your you know besides just game with the homies uh you know it'll be worth your um worth your admission Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, no one goes to these events strictly for the prize support, but it is nice to, you know, help reward people for their, you know, for their support, for their efforts, uh, and you know, the, just the time to come down and support the event. Um, yeah. But it's going to be a good time. I, I I'm looking at the uh, registration list, and I won't say that I know everybody, but. I know most everybody that's showing up and they're all top notch people. Like it's people that we've, you know, love playing with and they're just they're gonna make the events and great. <laughs> and great. No, he hasn't signed up yet. <laughs> hmm. I'll be there. I know, I'll put you on there. He might he might not be allowed out of the basement that weekend. I'll be there. I'm just Already hoping the away. power goes out in uh, <laughs> Portsmouth that weekend. <laughs> I can escape to free claw my way to freedom. Um, up the laundry chute. Sorry, not yep. not to interrupt the uh, hobby talk, but I just wanted to make sure we shouted that out because that is that is timely. There are still spaces available, and since we've got the EO here, I figured we might as well talk about that a little bit here at the at least yeah, the first. It first chunk of time we've got here rather than trying to like do it at the end after everybody's already fucking tuned out because we bullshitted too much um so who's who else that. has got something that they've been working on uh me i'll go yeah man so uh feel free <laughs> yeah i've been working on my ultramarines um right now they're down to basically getting the terminators uh all banged out and i'm gonna get some transports painted up in legion colors because i have been borrowing out of my other armies and while definitely cost effective feels bad man like you like to have everything all in one color or you can uh, just do the big brain move like eric and just like society white and red just yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> just do white scars world leaders late 
Harrison you're my uh, my allied night lords in white and red. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> weren't you talking about um taking the emperor's children to uh call to arms? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're coming with me to call to arms. Um, I got a box of Mark IV Marines sitting on the shelf. I'm debating whether or not to make a vet squad out of them or another tactical squad. I think I might do a vet squad with power swords and just kind of roll through. They're going to be faster than everyone else. Aren't vets weapon skill five? Yeah. Could also count them as, because um, I'm pretty sure vets can buy charnable weapons too. You could just count them as charnable sabers and make goddamn sure you're faster than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, actually, vets with charnable sabers would just be flat better than Palantine blades. Yeah. Because then you can put something nasty on the sergeant, give the sergeant a fucking thunder hammer or something, and just let some shithead accept the challenge with his fucking duelist edge saber, be hitting at I-6 or whatever the hell. Or a command squad, I hear those are pretty good. People be sleeping on the command squads. Actually, I think I have a command squad for their army. Which all have charitable sabers. Cool. Yeah, now I could do that. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, just working on uh, Rich's uh, world leaders there. Pumping I'm, along through that. I'm glad that we managed to keep those in the community, because those were once Jason's, then they were mine, and now they're Rich's. So they're just staying, staying local. Yeah, I found out the, to keep them. The ho-ass models. <laughs> I found, speaking of ho-ass models, I found out the hard way that the resin... I don't uh, like this segue. The resin... Uh, Dreadnought drop pods there are an absolute bitch to put together. Oh. Yeah. yeah they're not Basically, my, my big complaint is that the bottom piece, the bottom of it is in two pieces that are like monolithic pores that shrunk away from the, the part where they would glue together. So there's this big bubble of air between them. Hey, did you see uh, Did you see how mine was after I let Jack borrow it? It was in pieces. It was in, dead. In, yeah, yeah, it was. And he didn't even, like, abuse it. Like, that's not to fell apart. cast aspersions upon Jack. It just, that's not a, a well-made model. And, yeah. Not, yeah. It, I, like, I, there's few models that I remember putting together. I remember putting together that one. Like, yeah. um, I don't know. Has anybody gotten one of the like new ones that they like redid it or whatever? Is that was that any better? Uh, I've never used one. Yeah, I've never bought one after that. I don't know. I've gotten a new one to know if there's any better now. I would imagine. Mine are all so, marsh but... pattern, so <laughs> I never had to deal with it. Mine were all marsh pattern. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, now like, I was just thinking about that. Like, yeah, I've got the marsh pattern, and I can. Now that I've gotten the Jupiter, I can just print the frame in one piece instead of having to like glue the damn thing together. That's yeah, not keep, the do- keep the doors separate and we Gucci. Just fucking. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming the STL you have for him has the little slots for the little magnets, so you can just mag the doors in there. You don't even have to worry about. Actually, it. no. They it it doesn't use a uh, it doesn't use a hinge. It like it's got it a it's yeah it's got like a slot um like a with a not, not a peg but uh, like a biscuit a, joint kind of thing yeah so like you can so you can slide it in when it's open and slide it in when it's closed but it doesn't just swing i see which yeah, they're really for good. most practical applications it's fine <laughs> like i'm i'm totally fine with that yeah. um although realistically uh dreadnought drop pods are kind of tough to get on the field in this edition as everything has fucking interceptor to be intercepted to death. So, what are you putting in the dread pod? Oh, uh, this is uh, for Andy, Rich mostly. Probably a Leviathan then. This is yeah. Rich's Leviathan, yeah. Oh yeah, because I was gonna say like contemptors can still fit in dread claws, and yeah. then they don't have to get out. Mm-hmm. I know. For I mean, my purposes, I'm better off starting on the table, to be honest. At the same time, like salt out of it too. I'm kind of okay with drop pods getting intercepted because like okay so they waste a unit shooting at the drop pod blow it up okay the dreadnought gets out like ignores the pinning check it would have to take i think you can i think you can target the dreadnought because it comes out immediately it doesn't sure so like if they have multiple interceptor units which is fairly common 
but then like the dreadnought can survive most things that are going to get shot at it unless you've got like two las cannon squad. squads or something which like then it's like okay fair <laughs> like yeah i, mean, I, I would know. yeah i mean you know that you're going to bring that dreadnought in you should be dealing with the stuff that can sure. intercept from you side. should be taking a 10 man volkite culverin squad to deal with that 10 man las cannon squad well, I think that we're actually pretty lucky in that no one in our local meta would do some dumb shit like that and like really, you know, try to game it that bad. <laughs> I don't, okay, all right. I now feel bad about my twenty man sun killer squad. I wouldn't. <laughs> Fuck it, man. Just do it. I mean, it's like what a seven hundred point just, unit. As long as you two are just playing each other, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I, I I limit myself to like. <laughs> 10 to 15 guys in most games because it's unfair. It's oppressive to have 20 last cannons on the table. I mean, sure, but like now that you can return Let's fire five. or like, like I can, I mean, yeah, they they will absolutely kill the shit out of whatever they shoot at, but at the same time, they can be shot in return. And sure. Like, I'll, anyway whatever <laughs> um so uh ben was there anything that you wanted to talk about that you've been working on other than just doing print and stuff i've been working on con stuff like you know, i was working yeah. on stuff for uh the nova you know getting ready for it it's, you know the sheer amount of terrain that we needed to have on on deck for that was ridiculous but yeah. now trying to get the uh, everything ready for uh call to arms is also yeah. just as so Which, I'm just i don't know if i got a chance to tell you while we were there but i did notice that you had added some stuff to your army and what i saw looked cool that you had added like it looked like you had added some like war paint to your contemptor and like stuff like that yeah, a little little bit uh, i i I, when I have the, the uh, those moments where I'm not working on other things, like I, I've been trying to just spruce up that army because it was very gray and very simplistic. So I'm trying to make it at least a little bit more interesting. I'm not a uh, I'm under no illusions that I'm gonna you know get you know best in show on anything, but I at least want people to look at it and be like ah neat space wolves and Dude, then you know I still love that fucking knot work you did on your Leviathan. Like if you can find the time to do that on all your dreadnoughts and vehicles, that shit would look dank. That is that is the plan, um, and the, and I want to do uh, now that I've got a little bit better of a uh, system in place for it. I want to redo it a little bit on the Leviathan. At least go back and like sure. you know tighten it up and clean up the edges a little bit. Yeah, make sure you make it look like the THX symbol, like I did my like IX that I did <laughs> on my Rhino. Um, <laughs> so like that's what I was working on was just stuff for Nova. Now that Nova's over with, I'm kind of taking a step back. I don't know if this guy's going to show up on camera at all. He's blurred out, but I've been working on a Kingdom Death uh, himbo figure. Blurred out for good reason. Blurred out for good reason. Um, also working on, um, I got one of those new boxes of Possessed from Nova. Uh, built them up to use them as Galvor back. God, those models are so fucking cool. <laughs> They're going to be a lot of fun to paint. Uh, finished building up my Terminators from my um, uh, box. Uh, and I think if I have the time, I'm not going to like bend over backwards to try to do it because the Lightning Claw Terminators in my list did just fine. Um, at the events I played them in, but I was thinking of swapping them for like a Cataphracti squad with some like power fists and thunder hammers just like for a little bit more of like punch um but yeah we'll see if i get that for call to arms if not no big deal um but yeah, yeah just been working that, on that stuff that reminds me of a point as a side note that i've noticed have you guys noticed that legion terminators have done really uh, your legion terminators done really bad against specialty terminators in this oh, edition yeah almost like, all of the special terminators bad. have weapon skill five yeah like that 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 by itself is enough yeah like that's why uh, that is one of the reasons why like in in first edition uh you know i've been playing a, a very similar list for my space wolves for a long time and i always just used legion terminators they were fine they worked exactly the way i wanted them to bless you um but now like there's 
the only reason why I would take them is because I, I'm I'm in a points crunch, and even then, like it's it's a hard sell. Like bar gear are just so much better. I can equip them the same way, but I'm but I'm basically paying for a couple of extra special rules and weapon skill five, which is absolutely necessary. Dude, that fear you know what? on the Varagir is no joke. It is not. It it it, it comes in handy, you know, often. You know what special terminators don't have weapon skill five? Atramentar. Atramentar. Fulmentaris. Well, Fulmentar is like if they get into close combat, it's already over. Like, like something yeah, has already gone up. gone wrong. To be fair, they yeah. start in close combat almost. They're bolter range. They're really good, yeah, but they're at bolter I'm, range. I mean, they're, they're still plasma close. missiles, like yeah, yeah. and yeah. that are going to be able to you know overwatch on their way in, like. Oh, I'm not complaining. I was just pointing no. out that they are also there are, no. There are a couple of uh, Legion specific Terminators that don't have weapon skill five, but usually, at least from what I've seen so far, most they are. they make up for it in some other way. Like yeah. they're not close combat oriented, and th but then you also have like if you don't have uh, if you if you didn't want to use the Atramentar or you wanted a specialist Ultramarines Termin Terminator squad, then you go with the Command Squad. They do have weapon skill five, and you, they get you know a couple of extra little bonuses like leadership. well, well in in Night Lord's case, you just go with Contagar, but they yeah, are sure. very limited in their options, and right. I don't have those modeled already, so. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That, that, I mean, for... that is a thing. That is a thing. I, I, I'm one of the few weird guys that actually likes the uh, the Varagir models, but they didn't come with the weapons that I tend to like on Terminators. Sure. And you this edition, work there. Yeah. Yeah. This edition's frost weapons are just, they don't really do it for me. Um, I don't. I think they kind of got the short end of the stick, which is fine. I mean, they got they, they got buffed in a number of other ways. The 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 army in total. So, yeah. I. I just use the the regular uh, cataphracti, and I'm happy with them. Yeah, can't be overstated. Kind of cool, the uh, the benefit of bringing the Terminator command squad is they then gain line also. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, as Ultramarines, I get the best of both worlds with the uh, Suzerains because they are not bulky Terminators. See my balls. <laughs> when you're shooting at them, they're uh... cameras on. We can. When you're shooting at them, they're, uh, you know, cataphractic who can run. And when they're in close combat, they're, you know, they're just not bulky cataphractic terminators yeah. with weapon skill five. And they're all characters. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets changed. Or if yeah. you, but um, probably. So, yeah, do we want to roll on into uh, pick of the week and then we can get sure. on into uh, Nova recap? do it absolutely um well i'll go ahead and go then um uh my pick of the week uh, i put it in the in the podcast chat but it is uh scarlet by will han uh we just came from capital palette where uh that piece won not only best mass best in category master single figure large it also won best in show and it also won fan favorite uh, which is the first time that's happened at Nova yet, um, where the Best in Show also won Fan Favorite. And that model fucks. <laughs> like, this model is so good. Like, you look at the pictures of it, you're like, yeah, that's a pretty cool model. You see it in person, and that red, like, pulls down your pants and slaps your cheeks, man. Like, that red does not fuck around. Uh, it's absolutely insane to see it in person, and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to. Also booby. Also booby, yes. I mean, yeah, all of my pieces yeah. that performed well had cleavage of some variety, so, you know. You would have won more had there been nip. <laughs> one one of my pieces did have nip. Um, which, like, was it a dung beetle? No, it was not a dung beetle. That, that did win, but it didn't have nip. Um, the one that gotcha. got a silver that had nip was one of the uh, creature caster, like the creature caster Slaneshi style demon that I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She had nips out, tips out, nips out. I ought to get for some Harambe. of the old <laughs> nips out. Now that I Harambe. think about it, I ought to get some of the old uh, Juke, the old uh, dark Eldar uh, slave girl. 
Oh my god. Face pieces. I actually have a bunch no. of those. No. Put them on my Emperor's children. God, Put them on the bases of like my so freighters bad, and stuff. Dude, they're so bad. The old school cred would be worth it though. Yep. Man. I'll I'll get I'll get up with you, Gray, because I think I've got I think I've got like half a dozen of them. Oh, shit. I don't know how I have them. I've never I've never run in a Dark Elder army, but I think I've owned like three of them. Nice. My brother in Christ, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's um, who's, who's flagpole? The... I got my pick in the chat anyway, so I'll go. Oh, uh, I was just kind of looking around at different paint jobs. Uh. This uh Contemptor Dreadnought. Uh Google says it's by Stefan Johnson. Sure. I got it from Putty and Paint. That's good. Uh yeah, I really dig the non metallic metal blue that they've done here. Like the highly reflective kind of nature they've painted on it. Mm hmm It almost looks silver more than blue. Uh I just think it's neat. I don't know. Yeah, I think they did a decent enough job with the tailpipe smoke. I'm not a big fan of modeling smoke on things in plastic slash resin because I think mostly it just looks like globs of poo. But this looks good. Yeah, yeah, they've got some um, sky earth non-metallic metal going on like yeah. chrome blue. It's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I'm into it. They did a good job. That's my uh, pick there. And better yet, it's got its little display plinth, but it's also on a gaming base, so he could play with this model if he really yes, wanted to. Yes, he could. I'm digging the roses on the stairs thing. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. There's Although... no way on earth I would play with that model. Not with how often, like, either I n knock something over or... More likely, I, I put it near the edge, and then my big fat gut like breaks an arm off of something. Or one of your many step zones comes by and just picks it up by the model. True. Another 12-year-old wanders into the gaming store and decides that Ben's a stepdad. Um, <laughs> I mean, that that is my eternal struggle, man. I spend so much time on my gaming pieces, and then I'm like... Do I That's really Jake's eternal struggle. He's, he has so many step zones. There. That also, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'll say what you will, but that kid was probably one of the best wingmen I've ever had. <laughs> probably, <laughs> man. Please fuck my mom! <laughs> Please! Just, just like, my mom's just a lady. She deserves love, too. Just basically <laughs> screaming, please date my mom in the middle of a game store. <laughs> Please, oh, man. you're funny. She needs laughter. <laughs> He's like, and you're like, all right, kids, see you around. He's like, see you later, Dad. I mean, Ben. I mean, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he went out, ran outside, got two, uh, came back with a baseball and two mitts. <laughs> but Ben had already gone out for cigarettes. <laughs> and what he needed to do is get his mom stuck in the dryer. Oh. Man. <laughs> What are you doing, Step Ben? <laughs> what are you doing, Step Dad? Oh no! There's nothing good about where this conversation has gone. All right, well, let's move on then, Ben. Let's get us back on track with your pick. Oh, I, I 100% do not have a real, uh, real pick of the week. Interesting. Uh, See, I figured you were gonna pick something like the Mech Book or like. That's what I figured. Uh, I... No, so uh, well, I did get the uh, I did get the mech book. That's a good uh, that is a good one. Um, and I've looked through it, and I did have the opportunity actually to play against it. Um, yeah. at, uh, at at Nova. Um, I will say that I don't think that Nova was a particularly great venue for mech this year. Um, and oh, and I I played it or I played as it a little bit in the uh, in the mini blam. I took uh, I took a night house, so I got to dick around with those guys for a little bit. Um, overall, uh, and this is very early, obviously, but um, what I have seen so far, I actually really liked of of Mech. Um, I think that they've got some really interesting units. I think that the the worst excesses have been curbed 
Uh, I think that they've brought some utility into the underutilized or you know, just straight up never used uh, units. Um, so I think that there's going to be some interesting list building opportunities. Um, you know, I don't think it's perfect. I think that there's still some room in there that it could probably be abused in certain ways. But I mean, that's that's can be said about basically every army at yeah. this point. Um, there's also a few but... things in there that like don't really work rules as oh yeah so like yeah there are some there are some weird inconsistencies um there's definitely going to need to be some clarifications yeah like armagers are are one of them like because right now you technically can't use grenades against it but you can against you know know, knights (laughs) um which is also weird armor bane like yeah and they're a heavy support which is kind of wild to be honest Um, well the attacks its weapons are strange and don't work and like you have to pay to upgrade to like worse weapons that makes the model not be able to function like stuff like and, that. and what does gets an additional attack and are they they're not specialist weapons and all sorts of other weird um there, yeah. there there's there, there's there's been some bad editing and proofreading on some of these books but when i go in and i read them you know i i try to look at what okay what is the most you know i'll say obvious you know, direction they're trying to take with these things. Like, what's going to make the most sense? And I try to make, especially when I'm making decisions about how to rule on something, because inevitably these questions get asked. I mean, you guys are a part of a lot of these conversations. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what makes sense? Like, what was the intention of the writers? And like, yeah, it's a very complicated game and rule set, so things get missed or things get misinterpreted, especially if you've got different groups of people writing different sets of rules. But you know, regardless, yeah, um, I think that you know this rule book has a lot of good going for it, and I don't. I think we'll finally get to play that army and see it on the table. You know, represented well, and no one's going to be immediately like concerned, like, "Oh God, I've got to play mech now." Concern. This is <laughs> like, like it, because Concern. I played, I didn't play mech a ton in first edition or against them, because especially in our local area, you know, there was only a couple people that a had them, and you know. But the majority of the time you, you you face up against him, you're like, oh, crap, this is just not going to be fun. Like, yeah. everything I can do in my Legion, you can pretty much counter and do better. And it's like all of your stuff is going to, you know, is going to be really tough against everything that I shoot at it. Oh, you've got weapons that are going to hit me better than I can hit you at a higher strength and a lower AP pretty much across the board. And then when I do get into close combat with you, almost everything that's going to hit me back is going to be AP two or AP three. Yeah, like yeah. there, there just there just wasn't a lot that made it enjoyable to play against, other than the models look really fucking cool. Now I think you're going to see them, and yeah, they're going to be tough. I mean, big robots are going to be tough to fight against. They're strong, but they the 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 changes to how uh you know, oh, some of their stat lines. Um, their speeds, their initiatives, the weapons that they have. Um, I think that that's just going to make things a lot more even keeled to, to play against. Yeah. So I, I think that is, I think it's a pretty big win. The only downside right now is that you can't get the damn book. You, you can get the digital, it but the did book itself. Just, I think just this weekend, I think it went up on the web store for either pre order or for purchase for North America. Yeah. So uh, now, I, I think, as of recording, you can, you can now begin to start get getting your book. Um, yeah, that's why I say uh, Nova, you know, should have been a better a better representation, but uh, there were only a handful of players, and I did get yeah. to play a couple games. So I think that that's a pretty big win, and if they can continue the design philosophy that I'm seeing so far into the you know the next uh, the Imperium book uh, and then you know custodies and demons and all that so that yeah everyone's got their shtick and like you know, they've got their strengths that you know everything can be abused if you want to but by and large everything feels kind of on level. Yeah. I think that that's gonna be real good for the the heresy gaming in general. 
I mean, like, as we've talked about, I think you, me, and Eric all, like, wanted to play mech at some point and then played against mech at some point, and we're like, oh, God, I don't want to do this to people. Jesus Christ. No, and now because, I'm, like, like, actually thinking about it again. I'm like, huh, actually, I could go back to that now that they're not, like, stupid. Well, like, I brought mine out of storage, and, like, I had not gotten super far into it. Well, like, yeah, uh, I, I don't feel bad now, like, playing the way that I want to play. Like, I, yeah, I want Stompy Robots, but now, like, there's other things that are also pretty good and that do something different. So I don't feel like I have to play Stompy Robots. I can have them and then run, you know, the, the little tech thralls and just make a little annoying little tar pit units and... I can take the uh, the the Marmadons and stuff, and like they can be you know a cool unit to have on the table. There's just there's 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 options now, and they all do something a little bit different, and I, I think they'll function pretty well as a cohesive army. I don't just have to rely on you know you can't kill me, and then I just lob you know plasma. And I just mortars. morb I all like, over you. Yeah, I just morb all over you with you know double shotting plasma mortars that uh ignore cover plasma morb all over you yep like yeah the uh I, like I, I'll, I'll not feel bad fielding a thanatar now yeah all right eric what you got yeah so just to reiterate about the mech book like yeah i know jakey said it we we consider playing mech and then decided that no man one man should have all that power um but yeah after reading it like I have uh, renewed interest in playing Ordo Reductor. I've got a bunch of shit coming to me. Uh, so that is like actually no shit going to be in the work soon. Um, and yeah, there, there's nothing like I'm getting to use a lot of the same stuff, but the play style is still going to be different, but, uh, which I am okay with. Um, and I f feel like it's going to be a good, balanced army. Uh, but my pick... Uh, is a little bit different. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of Warhammer video games, and GW just kind of lends their license out to uh, whoever the hell wants it for the most part. And some of them are good, some of them are bad. One that I've been playing lately is uh, Warhammer 40,000 DACA Squadron, uh, which is basically ace combat, but or orcs. And it's... Uh, it's is it the best game I've ever played? No. It's, you know, it's it's a little clunky in some of the controls, but you know, it's it's orcs. You can cool down your weapons faster by boosting. Your paint scheme affects your stats and ramming enemy planes is a uh, perfectly valid form of combat. So, I've been having a lot of fun with that. That is my pick of the week. Nice. It it goes on like I'm pretty sure it's pretty cheap on Steam to begin with, but you know it's those things go on sale on pretty often. Yeah, and I got it on sale, so just just wait, be patient. Uh, it's definitely worth at least ten dollars. And it looks like there is a demo that you oh, well, can you download for free. And they've also got like from the very start, you get to fly a looted Doom Scythe if you want to. <laughs> nice. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it is right now. There is it's not a it's not on sale at the moment, but it is just twenty bucks. Like clearly, as as Warhammer players, we've all spent more money on less impressive shit. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's like, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's no like Space can... Marine, but it's no Eternal Crusade either. Oh, God, damn! God that was <laughs> a depressing game. So like, yeah, it looks like you can like customize your fighters and shit. Okay, yeah. I dig it. Work DACA I'm, Squadron. I'm I am downloading the demo now. Top DACA missed opportunity to be called Top DACA. Well, they've got a I don't know what the difference is, but there's a Flyboys edition, which I think is what I have, and I keep in my head I keep calling it Flyboys DACA Squadron, which isn't what it's called, but it's what it should be called. It's what it should be called. Yeah. Um, that is yeah. That is the only one that I see that's available is the Flyboy. Edition. Seems a missed opportunity to call it Top Gork. <laughs> yeah. Um. So before we roll into uh Nova experiences and recap, um, I I general gen generally want to keep this like kind of positive. But does anybody have a piss they want to talk about? 
Don't try to yeah. find one. If you have something, no, if you have a piss I, you want to talk about, please feel free. But I, don't. I, I think I do have I do have a piss, uh, but it, it's <laughs> it's, it's a, kind it's of a, a little gen- piss. It's a little piddle. It's, when I when I when I say it, you'll you'll understand where it is bred from. But I will not. I will keep it. Generic. The balls, of course, that is where piss <laughs> is stored. Piss Typ- is stored. Typically speaking, I don't know. I wasn't a biologist or anything, or a biologist. I mean, it's proven by science. I'm not a piss engineer, Ben. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I, as, as the person in the group with the giant balls, you would be our piss engineer. <laughs> I know a guy who's a pee-pee doctor, so I can ask him. A pee-pee doctor. <laughs> now, Christ. great. Are, have you seen the credentials, <laughs> or did he just say that and then said, here, let me show you? Uh, legit, an uh, old buddy from college became a urologist. Okay, but is this like a Seinfeld, like, ass man scenario like does he just have like piss man on his license plate or like is he actually a urologist (laughs) ppdr so he's a he's a good dude and so i could never really be like i can never rib him too hard right and uh it was no that's his job right when he chose to go into uh the field he made this big facebook post about it you know of course he did he's been praying on it you know he's on the right path and yada yada it's a abiding interest for a long time I had to stop myself from commenting. So you like to see the pee pee? I had to stop myself. You like us? Show, see the, the, show the wee wee. I'm pretty sure he's got his parents show on his Facebook. Her show her the wee wee. Show her and he pee-pee. took that literally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, anyways, uh, so the, the, the my 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 piss of the week is just some the the bad attitudes and the um just the the drama that some people bring to their games and to their events um like walking in there with like a sense of not only superiority but like that they're owed something like like this community is not that and it always just it, it just always hits me wrong when people come in to uh, a, a um an event that you know people are spending a lot of time and effort and you know in a lot of cases money making uh you know that is one of them gray yes um but uh like coming in and like they 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 come in there with expectations that like you know, you know they are owed something that they should be they should always be considered the top like and uh, or and making other people's uh efforts you know uh, you know kicking them down to talking shit like just making it a negative experience and i just don't understand that mentality and yeah there there's a couple of examples from that that we've talked about that happened over at nova um there every once in a while it pops up you know in the local you know gaming community usually we do a pretty good job of you know talking to those people and it gets you know it gets squashed pretty quickly but like i just don't understand the the the, the people that do that sure like that, that they and come for the and record make... this is nobody at least so far as i'm aware there that this was not an attitude that was had by any of the heresy gamers like no 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 there there's always you know something little things here and there tend to pop up but but no it was uh, our events were as far as i could tell went off almost without a hitch um there's a you know a couple of minor things, but those got handled. But uh, you know there's some things in the you know the greater community that have gone down and just you know if you're in this community, it should be f- you know for positivity's sake. Like you know, your win record doesn't matter. You know yeah yeah we want to you know encourage everyone's growth and you know you know prop people up when they're doing real well and show you know enthusiasm. <laughs> But if you're doing it, if you, you know, if you're trying to get better at the expense of someone else, then it's just you know, you're just not the right kind of person for this community. And or if that's your motivation for getting better, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like it's out of spite time, instead of yeah, yeah, it it doesn't make sense to me. Just that's not my gaming philosophy, and it just it always rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. But yeah, you know what you 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 know uh, a couple of the instances that I'm talking about, but I won't yeah. I won't say names. No, because honestly, those people don't need any more screen time they've already gotten. Um, yeah. but yeah, so uh, Nova recap. Um, Ben and I went to the Nova Open. Ben was actually one of our uh, event organizers for Nova Heresy this year. Um, and we just figured that we'd kind of give you a a blow by blow of just the whole weekend and um 
from both the EO and the attendee myself uh, perspective and just kind of talk about talk about the fun times and, and good times and hype it up for next year, I guess. Yeah. Um, so uh, for, for those of you who may not know, the Nova Open is a uh, tabletop uh, gaming convention uh, held in Northern Virginia every year, uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, bless you, and you, if you could stop that shit, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, um, for what it's worth, I mute myself on the recording because I can't, like, do both. Uh, for what sorry. it's worth, fuck you. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm... I'm... I'm I'm trying to spare the audio listener because I'm coming out of having a cold and I've got the occasional cough or yeah. whatever. But uh, it, it's an it's an event that I've only been able to go to now twice. Uh, my first event was in nineteen. I know Jake went. What was uh, you've gone a couple times? Yeah, eighteen was my first. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just had such an amazing time in nineteen. You know, I, I I'll say that that was you know one of my the the best times I'd ever had in uh, in gaming. Um, and this year, uh, had the opportunity, uh, first to simply be one of the individual event organizers. So uh, for heresy specifically, we had three days worth of events, um, and we had three events per day. So we had nine total events and, uh, I was asked to be, uh, one of them, um, uh, for the, uh, for actually one of the very first ones, uh, called opening salvo. Um, which traditionally is just a very low, you know, you know, I, I won't say low key, um, just a very um, easygoing, laid back um, you know, a, a gaming uh, series over the course of a day. Um, yeah, like there's there's an overarching narrative and there are missions, but like by and large, like this year we did it, you did it a little bit more. Um, yeah regimented but in past years it was like hey bring up to five thousand points and you find an opponent you agree on a points value to play and you play the mission so like there was lots of like calling out and like grudge matches and stuff like that going on which wasn't really as much this year but i think that was more of a logistics thing than anything else well it was it well really it was because when i played it yeah i i was in that event in 19 and i thought it was fun but it was very uh, it felt like i paid for just open gaming and there were already tables that i could have done that on like i could have just found an opponent and played a game sure. i didn't need to i didn't need to pay for that you know for that experience uh and i also thought you know now that i'm organizing it i thought it was kind of a disservice to the players that yeah yeah there's no guarantee that you're going to get your games in because they're you know the original way that it was run it was like yeah play one game play two games play three games if you have time but you can leave at any point like well, there's no expectation for you to stay i'm like i I'm, I'm looking at it from the perspective of okay i'm a player i don't get you know i i came to this event with an intention and you know yeah i understand that the games may be different but i at least want to have those games yeah. um and it shouldn't be my responsibility to figure out how to get those games in that is the point of why i am buying into an event sure it should be it should be organized so i ran it um as a three game series and yeah it was a little bit long um it ran until about seven o'clock uh, or about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night with a uh, uh, with a break uh, for lunch and a uh, just a small you know kind of a bathroom break uh, in betweens game two and three, um, but overall it went really well and you know everyone you know I had um, originally we had forty two players signed up I think only thirty eight showed up a day of um, which is you know, kind of common uh, just that that shit tends to happen uh, people have to drop for whatever reason um, but anyways uh, so. You know, I got the opportunity to to run that, and I got to make the changes that I wanted to make, and I was really happy with it. Um, and early on in the uh, organization of Nova, um, the the lead EO, uh, a, a friend of ours, uh, Lily Bridges, um, had had contacted myself and a couple other people and asked about whether or not we'd be interested in like you know kind of you know training up to run the heresy at nova for 2023 
thought, okay, that's a great opportunity. I'd really like that. Um, that'd be a, a logical progression of things with, you know, the stuff that I'm doing here locally with the conventions and the, our, our local community. I thought that'd be great. Do that. Um, so myself and a, another um, friend of ours, uh, Jesse Irvin from up in Richmond, uh, raised our hands and said, yeah, we'll be glad to do that. Um, and so we got kind of in the back end of uh, the communications, got to talk to some of the people at uh, the Nova proper, their executive team, and kind of see the, the inner workings, at least from, a, from one level. Um, and that was really interesting. Um, and we got to... We got to July, basically, and uh, some unfortunate circumstances popped up that basically took Lily out of the game. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was it was on us. It was on Jesse and myself to kind of wrangle up all the, the cats uh, that was the rest of our EO team, make sure that everyone was you know, on their shit, you know, actually working, you know, moving forward. Because we all have day jobs. We all have lives. We've all got, you know, our struggles that we have to go through. So it's real easy to... <laughs> God damn it. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, yeah, it was stressful for, you know, a month while we got everything we needed to get done. And um work out some of the you know the the logistical issues that had not really been finalized or you know fixed to the point where we could rely on them um but you know it worked out um so if, you know from my perspective talking with the EO team and having been there through basically every event um you know it was tiring as hell uh but everyone seemed to have a really good time i I've gotten no negative feedback, at least, you know, none that wasn't, uh, you know, easily discussed or, you know, you know nothing bad. Um, but all of the events went off basically without a hitch. Um, everyone seemed to have a good time. Um, no one has spoken out and said, oh, there was this really bad problem or I did not have a good time for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm I'm really happy with how everything went uh got i got the opportunity to play in a couple of really good games um so on i'll give you a quick rundown of the events on thursday of the event we had opening salvo which i've already described uh shadow raid centurion which was a, a smaller points value centurion style series of games uh and then strike team which is kind of like the uh, the heresy equivalent of kill team um there's like a a fan made uh rule set for that which is really neat um friday uh had zone mortalis that i got to play in uh excruciatus which is more of a a, a traditional tournament style uh series of games um so that one is where you see kind of the like no holds barred grudge matches the the hardest of the hard lists um friday night we did a apocalypse style game called mini blam um so everyone got to bring uh, some of their big toys. Um, we maxed out at Warhound size uh, Titans. We didn't go with War Masters or Warlords or anything like that uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, Saturday, we had the Bromance Bash, which is a doubles tournament. Uh, then Adeptus Titanicus and Battlefleet Heresy each got an event, um, uh, which is really good. Both of them had a, you know, a, you know mostly a full group uh i know that the uh the princeps formal as they called it for the uh the adeptus titanicus event was very well received had some really cool uh maniples out there just mm -hmm. you know just really good looking stuff everyone seemed to have a really good time so um yeah it was um and, uh, austin hunt and uh jared lawson that did the titanicus princeps formal and austin knows how to run a fucking event he does some really cool stuff like custom uh custom terrain custom markers tokens uh oh, yeah. in battlefield individualized um loyalist and traitor like objective oh, flags yeah. um one of the missions they played was uh capture the flag so like there were flags for loyalists and traitors like on each table that were themed to the table that they were on and like one of the um one of the prize supports, I think it was for best theme, 
maybe i don't know if it was one of the one of the awards was you get to pick a table of terrain and just take it home i'm like yeah, dude that was fucking playing for pinks on titanicus that's fucking great dude i love that so shit. so i think that that one was actually for whoever uh, like got beat up the worst oh okay or who like gave up the most points and yeah they got word yeah yeah kind of yeah, you you got award to take home win. a a table's worth of terrain um which is awesome like yeah and he did a a, a mix of you know official terrain 3d printed you know you know home you know, scratch built stuff and it all looked really good so i think that was a really uh, that yeah. was really cool of of that team to put that together but uh every all of the eos did a i think a phenomenal job like i said it was myself and jesse irvin that uh that kind of headed everything up i ran opening salvo uh jesse Irvin ran uh strike team uh frenchie wortman up in pennsylvania ran uh shadow raids uh centurion um bo hayward ran zone mortalis tim devlin excruciatus uh will lancaster uh ran mini blam um had chris lee and lewis wendell uh, ran the uh, Bromance Bash. Jared and Austin ran Adeptus Titanicus, and then Stephen Campbell ran uh, Battlefleet Heresy. So, I mean, a big shout out to those guys. Everyone did a, just a phenomenal job, and you know, put in a lot of you know time, effort, and just care into the event. Those guys just they, you can tell they give a shit about not only the quality of their of their product but the the time that's going to be had by those involved like mm -hmm. they, they just genuinely care and it shows um so yeah. you know from, from a high level perspective i think that everything went really well i had a fantastic time at the event uh got to see a lot of people that i hadn't seen in a while hang out had some amazing food uh you know one o'clock uh kebabs in the morning uh not the greatest idea but you know what i stand behind it fucking <laughs> worth it baby those were that was uh, the the only bad part is like I wish I had known about that place back in nineteen because yeah. I would have gone probably like a handful of times. Shit was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it was really fucking good. Um, so what about you from the from the from the gamer's perspective? How did you see the event? Sure. So, um, I did not play in Bromance. Um, nice, man. I was tired and. A, a little hungover like it people everybody assumed that it was like more hangover than anything else but it was honestly i was just i was just worn out and just wanted to be able to sleep in um and i talked to lewis and chris and they were like yeah no we're good on numbers so i'm like you know if somebody's missing a partner and wants to play just let me know but if you guys are even on players like i don't want to mess up your system so like i'm i'm cool to just chill um and I ended up being a ringer. <laughs> yeah, you ended up being the ringer. I guess you took my place, probably. Um, which I'm, I'm glad. I, I think in the future, it's like for me. This is a, this is a personal thing. All the events are great. It's hard to pick which ones I want to play in because this was my first year doing opening salvo. Normally, I do, and these are the these these pairings of events have been the same way for a while. So, like, it's always an either-or choice. Um, like, for me, Zone Mortalis or Excruciatus, that's an easy decision for me to make because I have no interest in doing dick-kicking Excruciatus, like, at all. Um, sure. And I love Zone Mortalis. It's super cool, and it's easy to get a thousand-point force ready to play. Like, it's not hard. Um, opening Salvo and Centurion usually was more of a decision but i wanted to play in ben's event and and see what that was like and feel the full like army that i'd been working on for several years um and then saturday bromance bash and titanicus that is a very difficult decision to make like bromance is great um i bought a ticket expecting my normal partner to attend and he was not going to be able to attend this year so then i was kind of just out out to pasture um yeah that's a gamble yeah <laughs> so is. uh you know and titanicus is like as much as i love heresy titanicus is probably the best game system that games workshop makes in terms of just like how tight it is how fun it is to play like 
everything feels like it should like you feel like you're commanding a maniple of titans like it it's just really dialed in on what knocked it out of the park man yeah yeah we we really ought to play it more often yeah (laughs) i need to build my shit so we can play some more games yep i need to I need to get some time. I need to I need to play more often. I don't have an excuse because my mandible's painted at this point. It's not like everything I have and everything I want, but like I have a playable mandible painted, so like I, I don't have an excuse anymore. But anyway, that being said, um I think in future years I might pick one, maybe two events to play in. I think three days of gaming, while it's a lot of fun, is really exhausting. It takes a lot out of you. Uh, especially as as I start to get a little older and and <laughs> slow down a little more, um, I say that being thirty, it's not like I'm. <laughs> but you youngest know, in the group by years. It's, it's time to put you out to pasture, Jake. Right, I know. I got. I practically got one foot in the grave as it is. Um, Spend time with his remaining ball volume. But you know, it, it's also just got like one ball in the grave. <laughs> just time to hang out with people and be able to do more things and, and just hang out and relax and have a good time rather than, you know, being on the clock all weekend, so to speak. Um, but from the, from the events I played in, it was fantastic time. Um, opening salvo was a lot of fun. Um, it was some of the, well, some of the first true frontline 2.0 games I've played. Um, and it, was it was a lot of fun um i say this uh winning two of my three games i don't know where that came from (laughs) um i can tell you exactly what unit won you those games well okay we'll get into that um he's beginning to morb (laughs) i I did i did um and zomartalis was a lot of fun um I mean, I love Zen Mortalis. Uh, the new the new reactions definitely made a bit of a difference. Um, yeah, there were difference. there were some rules um, uh, misunderstandings in a couple of my games in Zen Mortalis that I wasn't willing to like put push the issue on. It was just kind of like, an, uh, okay, well, that's not really how that works, but you know, whatever. I don't really care that much. Um, and the only criticism I would have for the Zen Mortalis event. Um, would be that we didn't start until 11 or 11.30, and then the event ended at 4.30, so the rounds were kind of rushed. Um, like, I think our third game was only like an hour, um, and it was kind of a complicated deployment map. Like, it was it was the strips down the... Yeah three by three table and so that took a bit of a t- bit of time to like coordinate and yeah. figure out so by the time we were like deployed, an ambush style deployment where you right. you know, you've got a defender in the middle and then you're flanked on either side by uh, by the attacker and and, and measuring that, that out and figuring that out with zone mortalis maze maps was a little weird um and it didn't so go the- well for my opponent <laughs> Well, no, mine either, but, like, by the time we actually started playing, um, like, we only got, like, a turn or two done, and then that was the round, even with a thousand point games, so, like... I didn't need the hour. (laughs) I really, I, I, I'm really glad, like, this year, uh, as, you know, some of y'all have gotten to see, I went ahead and just bit the bullet and made a full-size Mortalis table, um... So we've actually, I've actually been able to get some games in on it, like here locally, and that's been really fun. Um, and then got to take those tables up to a uh, for Novo. Uh, they got played on, so that's really fantastic. I really like the new rule set. It's simple, it's clean, and it makes the game interesting. Like the reactions are, I think, they're brilliant. I think that they it gives you so much that you can do, and there's no downside to them. They're not like I don't think anyone could look at them and say like, wow, those are overpowered. No, I think they just like really make your decisions important um, in Zone Mortalis. Um, but uh, I I had three really good games. Um, however, I accidentally tabled all three of my opponents. <laughs> um, the first one, it was not at all due to my skill. 
it was not at all due to, to you know me just rolling fire and him rolling piss um i get well maybe maybe that's not entirely true so <laughs> One of the mechanics that was used in some of those games was, um, oh, every mission had um, mysterious objectives. So the second a unit gets within range, you roll a d6 and there's a table on the mission that tells you what that thing actually actually is. <laughs> um, and usually, like five of the six are beneficial. Uh, They're fine. They, they give, like, yeah, they, they, they do give something. you. A, they give you a bonus to your feel no pain or a bonus to weapon skill, something like they give you some sort of tangible bonus. However, the first game, the very first objective that I got close to, I rolled and it turned into a void detonation. So, you know, if you imagine just a big hole, you know, in the side of a fucking ship and all of a sudden everyone's trying to be sucked out of it. So the rule was anything that was in an open corridor. So basically if there was an open door, as long as you could trace a your finger along a, a pathway to touch a unit and there was not a door, they were not closed off. That unit had to take a uh, initiative test for every single model in that unit, or they just got sucked out into the void. Did not matter how many wounds, if they're heavy, they got to reroll it. Um, so, you know, my uh, my heavy support squads uh, and dreadnoughts only took uh, like D3 wounds, but individual infantry models, they just got sucked out into the void. So I blow a big fucking hole in the side of this, you know, ship that we're fighting in. And my opponent loses like, he loses like seven or eight guys. So not great for him, especially since some of them are Knight Cenobium. Uh, and then... I ended up losing like 15 guys just right off the bat. And I'm like, oh God, I have fucked up. We have not even engaged. We have not shot one another. We can't even see each other yet, really. Um, however, because he took so many casualties, he had to roll. We, well, he and I both had to roll uh, uh, morale. And he failed, and I didn't. So he had an, his HQ and an entire unit of assault marines like run off the board, turn one, and then I just had like these two broken squads and a dreadnought still alive. And it was just I felt really bad for the guy, and I could tell it in his voice like he was not happy with how that happened. I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to fuck up everything. What but, did you? I mean, I couldn't have tried to roll that bad, but uh. <laughs> It was fun. I mean, I really enjoyed Zone Mortalis. If you have the opportunity to to play it like locally, like do what you can to get a a, yeah. a board together. Like, yeah, I think don't... I think that's the main bottleneck for people is the availability of the board. Um, well, there's the there is you know the uh, the new kill team box set that's coming out has a pretty nice set of terrain in it that would work really well as a starter. Uh, we played on three by three foot boards, so it's not like you have to invest in a heavy amount of terrain. But yeah, yeah it is a it is a, a bottleneck. I, I recognize that, especially now that you can't get some of the old terrain. But honestly, I think 3D print's probably the best way to go for it, or scratch yeah. building stuff. It's gonna be your most economical way to get into it. <laughs> my uh, my third game is Zone Mortalis. That like ambush deployment that we had. Um, I played uh, race a guy from uh, Pennsylvania, yeah. and he was running basically the mirror list to mine. Um, we ended up playing a Blood Angels Day of Sorrows mirror match. The difference being, I was the loyalist Blood Angels player, and he was the traitor Blood Angels player. Um, he had run basically he took a mean list that was just how many bodies can i fit into a thousand points i think yeah, it was he like had, 85 based. yeah he had like two 15 man tactical squads two 15 man despoiler squads and then like a couple of apothecaries and characters scattered in there like it bare bones no upgrades amount of dudes which then like I had a unit of Crimson Paladins. That's exactly what they want to get into. So, like, didn't really go super well. Uh, ended up ended up actually tying that game, though, because it was just such a fucking scrum in the center of the table. It's just how all the objectives all shook out. But 
bottom of turn one, I think five of my six units were engaged in combat with his. Like it just, it did not take long to get it into became that. Became a fight. clusterfuck there in the middle. Um, he had a ten man plasma support squad that had beads drawn on my dreadnought, and I think he, um again like misunderstood some of the zm rules and like screwed himself where he like reacted with another unit and so then when my yeah. dreadnought went to get into them and he tried to shoot at it i was like oh well you kind of already used your reaction though yes. um, so that was just a little bit of a misplay on his part but i i you know sure um but you know it that was the end of the day we're both tired you know shit happens we only had like 10 minutes left to play the game anyway so like um <laughs> but um yeah so let's let's talk about this um this this unit that i had uh for opening salvo that like I, sure man like I, I guess it i don't know i don't know when the transition made to me being like a power gamer i don't know when that happened but i i think you've always tried to be it's just the <laughs> dice never panned out for you Maybe. I think you st finally started to learn how to write a list. Maybe. Um, so my list for opening salvo was uh, Ralderon and a unit of Crimson Paladins and a Land Raider. It was a unit of Lightning Claw Tartarus Terminators and a Land Raider. It was a, um, a tactical squad in a Rhino. A 15-man assault squad. Um... In Day of Sorrows, the Crimson Paladins are lined, so I had three scoring units on the table. Um, and Incendious Scoring Dreadnought. is important, kids. Keep it is. Keep those units in your fucking list. It is. Like, there were several lists that we saw that, like, people were like, oh, fuck, I don't have any lines, so... <laughs> Yeah, like play to the, the objective. The, the standard missions in the book, you can get away with not running many line units because like if you just roll up a random mission in the book odds are you're not gonna like have actual objective counters to fight over um but you'll still need line stuff in there but like for events they event organizers man i'm telling you they will write missions to make sure you've taken those troops in your list and if you don't you're gonna be screwed um um, the other cool thing about Day of Sorrows is my units gain line as the game goes on. So, like, as they get whittled down to 50%, um, it, all infantry gain line. Um, once they hey, man, all my lists have troops in them. I'm just saying. Yeah. They just tend to not have line. <laughs> um, you definitely should have at least a couple of line units in yeah. your army. Then the, like, heavy hitters I had was an Incendious Dreadnought, which I had to run up the table because in Day of Sorrows I can't deep strike. Um, a Derideo with the uh, Arachnus Laz Cannons, which I saw several of at Nova. It seems like a mm -hmm. pretty popular choice it's now. Pretty, it, is a, it is a strong pick. You can't yeah. really go wrong with it. Um, and a 10-man uh, Volkite Culverin unit with an apothecary and a master of signals. Um, the master of signals pick was because I was expecting to see a lot more deep striking than I did. Um, Cause day of sorrows, I can't deep strike. So the Vox disruptor array that the master of signals comes with, I don't really give a shit about that. Uh, it makes your dis deep strike be disordered on a roll of a one, two or three instead of just a one. Um, and then, you know, he has the Cognus Signum and the Augury Scanner and all the other, you know, nonsense that, you know, support officer would have. Completely forgot about the leadership rule he has. I don't know that it mattered, but I totally forgot that, like, once per turn you can use his leadership for anything that can draw a line of sight to his unit. Um, so, totally forgot about that. Um. But that unit was definitely, like, an absolute nightmare for people to deal with, and I was not expecting it to be that much of, like, a powerhouse. Like, I knew it was going to be good, but I was, again, expecting there to be sniper teams that could pin them or um, getting templates dropped on them with fucking Vindicators and, and Typhons and shit. Like, I wasn't expecting them to, like, sit unharassed like they were. But it took until, like, the end of my third game for them to even get 
gotten into, and that was by an outflanking Space Wolf like player. So like that that unit was an absolute terror. <laughs> like it was bad. I mean, any of the heavy support choices in a ten man squad, if they're if they get shots off, they're gonna do work. Yeah. I mean, doesn't matter if it's heavy bolter, doesn't matter if it's Volkite missiles, whatever. Yeah. And the fact that you can make them all ballistic skill five, like, yeah. is ridiculous. And you know, you it's and they've got what thirty six inch range, forty five on the culverins. Yeah. So I mean, you you're pretty much anything that's going to fire at them is going to be in uh, return, return fire, fire range. range. Yeah, so much. it's a it's a tough prospect to want to shoot at it. So it's it's a it's just an all around really potent unit. Um, and like I'm like I said, I didn't try to give them world burner on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> would that I could, Benjamin. Would I that know. I could. Um, like I was expecting them to get hit with more snipers. Like I I was really worried about snipers, and I didn't. I never played any. I don't know how many there actually were. I definitely saw lists. With recon marines, there and were rifles. A really there was a very good number of recon units just across the the event. Uh, mm -hmm. I know, um, Gray, you run recons in your ultramarines, yeah. Well, Gray's dead. Yeah, uh, and I, I run them in Night Lords. I do. Yeah. I'm sorry, I had my mic. Uh, oh, you're good, man. You did no, while you're talking. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah no, that. I can't recommend them highly enough. Yeah. yeah, they're they're really good units. I mean. They, Pinning is still one of those things where it's like you you cannot that can't be your only game plan. Right. Um, right. But the the precision shots and the, I mean the Nemesis Bolter is just one of probably one of the best weapons in the edition, just point for point. I mean, there's just no way around it. You've got a huge range with a really potent weapon. Uh, you just and, the, and you get to choose where those wounds go. Like you cannot. Yeah, and they're surprisingly good for nickel and diamond. Uh. <laughs> Ben's uh Ben's, Ben's like that shitty movie. There. It's like that shitty movie from 2009 where they kill all the kids while they're on the chat room. Yeah, all the Skype kids yeah. getting killed it one friends by list one. or whatever uh unfriended. unfriended well, yeah. Unfriended. <laughs> all right, well, there. I might get murdered here shortly. It's fine. Um, all right, Ben doesn't have any friends to unfriend him. They are this is why no, I don't um, invite you to go see Five Finger oh, Death Punch. <laughs> I invite <laughs> I invited uh, myself. He might the one that to... showed up by himself. He had his he literally had his cousin with him. Yeah, that he's not real. I mean that's actually <laughs> reasonable. Uh but yeah, they're a they're they're a solid unit. There was they were well represented, but pinning is one of those things that you just cannot rely on as like a one trick pony. Right. Um, well I think uh another usage for those um Recon Marines with Nemesis Bolters that people don't use them enough for is that you stick them in the farthest corner you can, and then you harass Dreadnoughts the whole game. No, oh, no. I've done no they're not sleeping times. on that at all. They're, they're, they are not sleeping on that yeah. at all. But, but their they're biggest they're... their biggest use has definitely been to remove... Um, problem characters and problem... Uh, uh, off carries. Um, yeah. and if anything, what the, the, what the the Nova armies kind of proved to me is like, it's costly, but putting artificer armor on those apothecaries, I was yeah. like, yeah, you're probably not getting a ton of rending with that unit, to but there's enough. Because it's what uh, wounding on threes, wounding on fives, wounding on fives. yeah, yeah. So, so mean, like you're a... you're rending fifty percent of the time. But that other fifty percent of the time, given your apothecary how, that two up save to be able to tank some of those shots. How are you? In. How is how is a five up a fifty percent of your of your minutes? things that are going through? Right of uh, like means, yeah. of things uh, that will wound half of those wounds will be rending. Uh, got threes and fours do not rend. Fives and sixes do. Right. Sorry that I, you're right. I that was unclear. I was like, I don't know how that works. I understand, yeah, no, Jake. I understand you completely. Uh, you I can have you him. Um, I think if you're, you're an ultramarine, <laughs> honestly, I think if you're an ultramarines player or a um, imperial fist player, why the hell would you not put recon marines right. on your army? So like, or I, an Lords player, I, I recommend or an very Lords, highly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ev evade this bitch. 
What do you know? It's a highly uh, one of the best new weapons in the game is highly recommended for the one of the two strongest armies in the game. Who would have thought? <laughs> Shocker. Oh, man. But like yeah, like I, I was very very worried about snipers with that unit, so I was not expecting them to like just get like left alone the whole time like they were. Or ball game. Like my first game opening salvo was against uh Josh Bruder. And he had a very unoptimized list against my list. Um, yeah. He had Sigismund, some Templar Brethren, and a Spartan. Okay, that's, you know, standard. Uh, two 20-man tactical blobs. Uh, and then I not think... Not ideal. <laughs> not ideal for that particular unit. Um, and then I think it was two or three units of, I'm pretty sure, Tartarus Terminators with... Thunder Hammer Storm yep. Shields in Deep Strike. So with, with the teleport homers. Um and man, that because I think that mission was like scattered objectives. So like there was an objective in the center of the table, and then there was uh each player took turns placing two other objectives. So there were five objectives on the table that you had to fight over. Um I parked my Volkite squad on one of them because I was like, well, if they start taking casualties, eventually they will gain line and I will be able to score that objective, even if they're getting shot from a distance. Um, and then there were, you know, they pretty much equaled out that we had them in a nice, even like X pattern. Um, and X is going to give it to you. X, X gave it to those fucking tactical Marines, man. I'll tell you what. So turn one, Volkite squad ate one of those tactical squads. Like, no questions asked. Just delete. Like Ate their ass. Ate their ass. Show oh, Marines how easily we blow Marines. Second turn, Volkite squad just <laughs> ate the other fucking squad's ass. Like, just... <laughs> squad broken. Squad it's, broken. It's hard to digest with the size of the hole in your chest. Um, and at that point, uh, my two Land Raiders... And the dare the dare deo didn't really even con contribute to this. I think it 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 glanced a whole point off the Spartan turn one or something. But my two land raiders were able to flank the Spartan and get into its side arc out of the flare shield range and just popped it. So then, so Sigismund and his Templar brethren were now facing the prospect of of marching up the table against said Volkite squad that was just gonna like eat them alive. Um, and I, I think he failed his um oh he also had a 10-man missile unit that i just ran my incendius right at because i'm like my incendius doesn't give a shit about your missiles like so i just ran That's him up the table and i think he maybe took a wound in like overwatch <laughs> or no he 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 used his uh imperial fist advanced reaction to charge his two remaining missile guys into my dreadnought to deny me the charge i was like all right fair play fair play <laughs> um that did not go well for them as i'm sure you can imagine no. um so he he conceded uh, i think the bottom of turn three i think he failed his terminators failed their reserves a couple times and i think by that point he just was done with that game which i can't say i blame him for that um but like yeah that that was the first taste i had of like that volkite squad doing that i was like man this this unit has not performed like this before i'm sorry uh like that was i was like those those tacticals definitely need an apothecary in there like for sure um so then uh rolled on into second game uh was playing Grady Nordquist who's a fucking yep. handsome motherfucker from New York um he had a son statuesque statue dude he so it was is Grady and Malcolm were were brothers from New York and goddamn these guys are some handsome sexy fucks dude like it was can't wait to link them in this uh in this uh <laughs> I'll I will we, absolutely uh, at them um Look, we really appreciate you guys. You're fantastic players, but you need to understand that you will it, that will always be overshadowed by the simple fact that you are prettier than the rest of us, and we hate you for it. Like it'll always be overshadowed by the it's fact that you guys, boys. you guys are fucking hot. Like, <laughs> um, so I played Grady's second game, and that was a really fun game. It was uh, table quarter control, um. And he had a Sons of Horus army 
Uh, it was like a Praetor and a Command Squad and a Land Raider. It was actually kind of a very similar list to mine. It was uh, a Praetor, Command Squad, and a, and a Land Raider. Uh, a veteran unit in a Land Raider. Um, three Contemptors. So it was a three Contemptor Talon. Um, I think one or two Tactical Squads. And I'm sure there was something else I'm forgetting. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting. But basically, he penned me into a corner the whole game. Um, and I was just able to weather the storm. Um, there was, you know, land raiders exchanging fire back and forth. The Derrideo definitely did more work that game, popping popping land raiders and such. Um, Raldoran and his unit of Crimson Paladins were also a terror. Um, for, for any of you uh, uninitiated, uh, Raldoran is kind of a fucking monster. <laughs> um he can uh his his warlord trait is our kind of wisdom he can basically yoink any loyalist legion warlord trait he wants um so a very popular pick and the one that i happen to run with this time uh is yoinking the solar marshal imperial fist warlord trait which is um grants the warlord in his unit an additional reaction in any phase um as long as it's them using the reaction uh, and it gives them plus one weapon skill in melee against traitors. Uh, so it gives Ralderon weapon skill eight and his Crimson Paladins weapon skill six going into traitors that I knew I was going to be playing because it's a narrative event, loyalist versus traitors. Um, and that was unkind. <laughs> um I did not know that Ralderon was going to be on par with other beat sticks like Karn and Sigismund, but he kind of fucking is. Like, damn. <laughs> damn. Uh, I have not played against a Kinza yet to know, like, how that would go down. Um, also didn't haven't run into a Sevatar yet. I'm sure that would probably go not as great for me. Um... But, yeah, Sevatar uh, is still pretty gross. Yeah, but Ralderon having strength 7 on the charge with Shred and Murderer Strike 5 plus, like, yikes. Yikes. Um, so that, that, was, good. that was just a fucking scrum in my table quarter. Um, that Grady's a great player. He had a great list, and I think our two lists were very well balanced against each other. Um, and this is not to like minimize his play or, or dice or anything, but I think I made some very cagey tactical moves with like when I chose to withdraw or like um, embark on a transport and scoot across the table and, and things like that. Um, I was not expecting my list to be able to handle three contemptors running up at me, but they managed it, managed it somehow. Um, culminating in like just like a big dreadnought fight in the middle of the table that was just like exploding everywhere and i managed to like not lose that many dudes from all those explosions um it was it was a good game it was a really great game um and it was it was close it came down to the last turn of like deciding how that scrum in the center of the table was going to go um then third game I played uh Dan Ryan. I wanted to say it was Ryan something, but no, it's Dan Ryan. Uh with it's his wolves. with his Dan Ryan, wolves. Ryan Dan. Um so that he had I don't remember what I think it's the Pale Hunters. Is that the right of war that lets you put a bunch of your shit in outflank? Yes. Okay, yeah. So he was running that. Uh, so he had a good chunk of his force in outflank. Um, it was like two units of, or three units of Gray Slayers or Stalkers, one of the two of them. I don't remember which one he was running. Um, a unit of Varagir and a Land Raider. Um, another unit of Terminators and another Land Raider. Uh, an Arcus, a Carries Contemptor, um, and. I want to say one other thing. 
Uh, so he put his Varagir in the Land Raider and one of his 15-man Slayer units um, in outflank. Um, and I basically was able to table him before his reserves came in. He got really unlucky with his reserve rolls. Um, and he was getting ready to, to, to forfeit. And I'm like, no, 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 hold on. Just your, your shit's going to come in automatically turn four. And I think that will go very badly for me. Um, and then you intercepted them with the, uh, culverins and deleted the unit in one shot. You know, no, I didn't because guess what unit was the only unit that got pinned from his outflank assault <laughs> was that fucking culverin unit. Oh, that makes sense. That went about as well as you would expect uh, with Varagir and Greystalkers up my butt with my big Interceptor unit pinned. Um, yeah. I I don't know if we, like, finished finished the game. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, I think Ralderon got Thunderhammered in his fucking mouth, um, which... <laughs> You know that happens. That that'll do it. That'll do it. Um, <laughs> that intersecy. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Phone that see. even then, though, that game was really, really close. Uh, I think that game ended up going Dan's way six to five or something like that. Like it was still really close. Um, Thunder hammers are really fucking good, and I don't yeah. tend to take them. But I need to I need to take just a couple like that brutal two, just makes it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Like I won't go into like heavy detail into the games that I play, but I will say like the guys that I ended up playing um uh, for our, like the uh, the bromance games, I had you know I had some very like to the wire super fucking tight games that actually made me think of um. Uh, me and Eric's games, like when we did our, the 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 White Scars game, where it came down literally to the last thing that could possibly shoot at you. Um, that game took years off my life. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Like, like it it was the most exhausting fucking game. Like, we're just doing every single trick we can possibly do to try to like one up each other. And it literally comes down to, I have a thing, like, I, I don't remember what unit it was, but I had something that could shoot at a lone biker that held an objective. And I had like, one save to roll. <laughs> oh, and one wound left for it, for there to to save and failed it and it was it was just it was but you know i mean the the, the close games to me at least are like those are the best ones like yeah. because it means like you know it, it it's just tight the entire time um you know the the games that you you end up steamrolling like you either feel bad for you know getting your ass whooped or for whooping ass too much um yeah. And and like and you know the difference. Like there there are some games where the points don't necessarily you know show just how close a game really yeah. was. Uh, but like the the I had you know, three really good games in a row when I played in the bromance, and two of them were ties, and they were like it was astounding how close those games were. I mean yeah. points wise they were a tie, but just every single dice roll for for a turn or two in a row just every single one everyone's looking at it like oh god this could be the dice roll that changes literally everything yeah i was watching some of your cuz like cuz i wasn't playing so i was just watching or walking around like watching people's games every you know few minutes or so um yeah i think i watched the end ish of your game where it was just a salamander fire drake fuck fest in the center of the table uh <laughs> and i think i also watched your game against the dark angels where you guys were like that that one seemed like it was a great game it was really good what i mean it their armies were good um we thought we were worried because like when we set up 
I was uh, I ended up getting a partner together with a guy named Sean. Um, I think it was Sean Leary. I can't remember his last name off the top of my head, but he played Alpha Legion. And I did not know the gentleman, um, yeah, but, but I ended up being a ringer for that event. And so I had my Space Wolves and like my side was really strong. Uh, you know, I had a lot of units on the board ready to move forward. He was playing Alpha Legion, so some of his stuff came in, you know, was coming in from, uh, or uh, uh, infiltrating, and so he was all over the place. And so we our, our left flank was kind of like, eh, kind of weak, and that just happens to be where the, the fire drakes were. <laughs> and fire drakes are utterly terrifying. Um, always have been. They always have been, but they're just so much scarier now because they're all fucking brutal too with their hammers. Um, but uh, it, it just ended up working out real well. We uh, we got really lucky. Like he, he, I'm not sure if you have you ever seen the Alpha Legion uh, advanced reaction because mm -hmm. it's yeah. ridiculous. Basically, like as you are getting shot, you can. Like double tap disappear. back or something? <laughs> no, you can. You know, you just teleport away. Oh and yeah, like you, that's right. You, so you teleport, like you choose to teleport. I think it's like twelve inches, mm -hmm. and then you scatter. Uh, I think a d six. So uh, worst case scenario, you go right back to where you were. <laughs> but right. he, well, he played this feint that just worked out miraculously, where. The Dark Angels opponent that we were playing, uh, Denny, he rides up with his 10-man Interrempter squad, and Interrempters are yeah. also disgustingly potent. Yes. And so he pops them out of a rhino, ready to just murdelate this squad, and it would have. I heard and, Morb all over him. Oh, uh, <laughs> Morb is maybe too kind of a word, if we're being honest, because they're plasma flamers, and he had 10 of them. And so he, and this is like a, this is like a headhunter squad and he uses his advanced reaction to just poof, be gone, goes beyond, behind some, uh, some terrain. And he is literally a half inch outside of all range of what could possibly <laughs> hit him. And it was a step, but, and now there's just this really nice open unit sitting there like, okay, now we got a game. And then so then the morber turn... becomes the morbed <laughs> <laughs> the morb so, you know, so yeah that's very apt because the first thing that happened in the next turn was my deradeo <laughs> that unit ends... got absolutely fucking hosed <laughs> well well it was it wasn't my deradeo it was my my uh, my spartan ends up firing one of its last cannons into uh a uh, sakaran explodes it the resulting explosion takes out like two of them, but then pins them and another unit of Dark Angels tacticals. So we have shut down, like we've taken away one of their offensive weapons and shut down two of their units and they cannot move. <laughs> so we're kind of free to start cherry picking the things that we want to to Get remove <laughs> yeah that would be yeah. the time to charge that fucking unit when it can't do anything about it well we didn't have uh, we didn't have anything close enough to to charge it that would have mm. been able to be effective um especially considering there was a unit of knight synobium just trudging up the center lane sure. and let me tell you like i i did end up like i ended up charging him with my with my uh far gear but that was it astounded me that i ended up winning that it it should not have gone my way yeah they synobium are maybe one of the uh, they may be the best terminator unit they're so good i actually i don't know i don't know, I don't know if i would give it to them or the fire drakes i think the, i'd give it to, i'd probably give it to fire drakes yeah just the fact just by virtue of awesome. having that well, the fact that you can get the three up, uh, invulnerable yeah. save, uh, but the the Knights Synobium are going at initiative. Uh, I think that the Deathwing, uh, uh, whatever the the unit gives them or the bonus gives them, I think plus one weapon skill. So I think their weapon skill six. Yeah, it's plus one to hit, which is oh. even better. Yeah, plus yeah, one oh, to yeah, hit they... when they're using a sword. Which guess what? They all have fucking swords. So yeah, they all have the tyrannic great swords, which are <laughs> like plus two strength and like murderous strike. Like it's either four or five ups. And yeah. 
So you're getting a lot of instant death wounds, um, but the downside is the uh, I don't know if the plus one to hit is better because it means that you know things that are of equal weapon skill do hit them back on fours as opposed to you know possibly bumping up to hitting on fives, which is yeah. I mean that's fair, but also then you're hitting like weapon skill four on twos. Oh yeah, I mean you're 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 totally right. It's a, it's, um, it's a trade off. It is like the. Oh, I one, think um, synovium are definitely offensively, like as far as putting the hits and the wounds on, probably better, or putting the hits and the wounds on, probably better than the fire drakes. But fire drakes are way more survivable than anything else. Oh, Pretty yeah, much they're, stock, they're the most survivable thing in the game. They are dumb strong. And, and they all have fucking thunder hammers, so whatever they do get through, it's like, yep, enjoy your multiple saves to not take this fucking wound in the face. No, the the, the, the one Brutal. wound that was will will murder you because it's strength eight. Uh, Brutal, yeah, two or three, good. whatever it is. The only thing that that helped that was like, it was my gamble was like, okay, I need to get in, and because if I charge, I'll be weapon skill six. Mm. So it'll reduce their ability to get as many hits on me, but uh, but it, it worked out. That game that was one of those where like yeah the score was like twelve to two, but like we were just knocking the shit out of each other for all all four turns of that game. But yeah. it was super good. Everyone that I played was just fantastic. Like they're all super nice people. Would love to have continued gaming with them. And that's exactly what that event is supposed to be, like. You know, next year I probably won't remember most of the results of my games, but I'll remember the people. Mm-hmm. I'll remember like that I enjoyed my time playing with them. I will probably yeah. remember mine because I had a positive win rate over the weekend, which is very unusual for me. Um, three, three, two, one, baby. <laughs> but like, oh. that's I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was just that one unit way overperforming or the fact that my dice weren't particularly pissy that weekend or combination therein. I don't know. I, you know, sure. Uh, well, I mean, so like, like Eric and gray, like when you guys go to events, what, like, what is your, what's your motivation for uh, going to those events? Playing a game in a different environment, more or less. So, oh. Like sometimes, like so, there's there are a few people outside of like the immediate area that I know, and it's cool to see them. Um, not a whole lot of them, but you know there there's that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really it's like yeah we're we're all getting together and playing some games together in a new in a different place anyway, and just having a good time and a narrative structure that we can talk about later. Yeah, like um for me it uh it gets me there's two things that I really like about going to these events. And uh the first thing is I like oftentimes there will be a story structure or a gimmick to the fights that maybe I wouldn't put in a regular game, you know, a regular game I'd go, alright, whatever, Dawn of War, let's kill each other. We got like three hours before I need to go home and take care of the kids, just fucking go. Um, so there's that, and then there's, uh, a fair amount of, I get to get out and I get to play against people that I would never have seen in armies that maybe I don't play against as much in the area. I mean, we have pretty much everything in the area, but we don't all play against everybody in the area. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know. It, yeah, that is like, yeah, like you were saying, like, as far as games you play normally, like I'm probably never going to see a radiation artillery guide in a normal game at tower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to get morbed all over by combined mech and guard here in ports here at Portsmouth. <laughs> you just morb to the face. Yeah. Or rat mech or whatever, you know, <laughs> uh, the rat mech, spooky mech. I really um, do like the rat mech. And I I love the aesthetic of it, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it takeaway, you know, big takeaways. Um, Last can Deradeo seemed pretty popular. These are these are like the the nuts and bolts takeaways of like 
if you want to call it a meta, just like things I saw or trends that I noticed. A um, lot more stuff in Land Raiders than I think we would previously see. Um, just by mere fact that Laz Cannons are fucking terrifying now. Like, the, just adding Sunder to them just makes them so much more effective at, at popping stuff. Just like the incidental fire from the Gravis... Gravis Laz Cannons on the side of a, a Land Raider is like a pretty substantial threat to any armored target. Um, I mean, I feel like the the twelve transport capacity doesn't hurt that either. Also, that yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, uh, there were yeah. definitely Spartans there, but I I I was expecting to be fucking drowning in Spartans, dude. Like, especially with Plastic box, Spartans, yeah, with yeah. Box. Like, I was I was expecting to drown in Spartans. Um, oh, they were they were well represented. Like, uh, a lot of armies did have them, but I think that the fact that not every army did is actually a a, a really good sign. Like, the yeah. Spartan is still a very good, you know, very good transport. Um, but not every army has something that needs to be transported in that in that capacity. Sure, Charybdis um, assault claw till the day I die. Yeah, in fairness, oh. I did not play the uh, Serrated Sun fucking uh, word bearers list that I saw knocking around there. Like, the one guy that had, like, two Maragals and, like, two Contemptors and, like, a bunch of drop pods full of Galvor back and shit. There, so, yeah, that was, a, yeah. that was an ugly-looking army. Well, that is a commitment to, to fluff to have Maragals in your army, man. Oof. I don't know, There's dude. Nothing good to say about that. They gonna, they're pretty good now. I like, yeah, know, they were a little dude. rough before, I think. But don't they still have the same uh, dumb rule? The same we hate the same demon hater rule that they had last edition. I mean, they, like can't be named near things that are corrupted or tainted. Whatever. I mean, I don't recall. Kinda, I guess, but like, do you, do you really want your? Dread now that dreadnoughts auto explode, do you really want your dreadnoughts standing next to a bunch of other shit anymore? Like, maybe I don't care about it needing to be out by itself when I kind of want it to be doing that anyway. Yes. Um, eh. I mean, you know, if you have a Terminator fight that's going bad with your Gal Vorbeck or whatever, you have your Gal Vorbeck engaged. You want to back it up? Like your Margal cannot back them up necessarily. Yeah. I, just thought was, I thought I always thought that was a weird rule they put in, and it didn't make a lot of sense game wise. But I'm not against Morgul, like from a fluff thing. I think they're a great model. I'd probably use them just for regular contemptors if I was running word bearers. Yeah, I think I'm not sure if you can corrupt a, a standard contemptor or not. I think that's just their answer to that. Um, yeah. I just meant I would just use it as like, yep, this is just my contemptor, and it just looks like a demonic. Oh no, yeah, shit. any unit with uh, infantry or dreadnought can take dark channeling, which gives them corrupted. Yeah, so like, I guess just corrupt a num normal contemptor. Then yeah, you can just use the Marigal yeah. model if you don't feel like running the rules for it. Although I don't know that it's particularly bad enough to warrant that, but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it because the only thing a dreadnought gets out of that is getting fear one and then getting further fucked by force weapons. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. But um. Yeah. Uh, I'll definitely um. Be uh, shelving that Volkite unit. Uh, like I don't I. I'm I'm I might bring it to the call to arms just because I don't know that I have enough time to figure out something else to stick in that spot. But like maybe maybe I won't put a master of signals in there. Like maybe I'll move those points around and like maybe that unit will be a little bit more reasonable not being ballistic skill five. And like being ballistic skill five and then also ignoring shrouded. Like that's that's the brutal part. But like you could put a tech marine in there for that. You could put an armistos in there for that. Which actually, you probably want to put the armistos in there because otherwise, you lose your heavy bonuses. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. That was that was one thing I figured out over the weekend because, like, I know we had a discussion like, why would I ever take the armistos when the master of signals is a thing for like twenty more points or whatever it is? 
um, because the Armistos gains the heavy subtype, so you can stick it in the heavy support squad, and it maintains its heavy bonuses um, if you put a Master of Signals. It never came up in any of my games, but if you do put a Master of Signals in a heavy support squad, um, they can't use their heavy bonuses, so like they can't re-roll their armor saves. Yep, for Templar weapons. Right, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, you can turn it down if you want to each their own. But I'd almost say, like, if you have something that works and you have one really good thing, like, keep it. It's not game breakingly broken. It's a regular ass unit. There's nothing about it that's super gamey or breaking the game. Like, it's a good sure. unit. Fucking use it. If your whole army, every unit in it was like, yeah, fuck you, sucks to suck, then that's where you have to go, hey, maybe I need to tone this down. Yeah. Like, um,. For my for that army for that list specifically, I think the only real changes I would make would be um, for like fluffy reasons. Maybe swap Ralderon for just a, a standard Praetor, um, just to give me a little bit more like narrative flexibility, um, and like you know save save him for something like hey, Eric wants to bring Karn. Do you want to bring Ralderon? Like, yeah, sure. Let's fucking touch tips in the center of the table. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, shit like that. Um, Might swap out the tactical squad for a breacher unit just to sit on objectives. But then at the same time, that tactical squad being in a rhino and being able to zip around the table actually saved my ass a couple times, so... I mean, you could put that breacher squad in a uh, land raider. Yeah, I the thing is, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough points for that. Um, yeah, that's fair. Because I really like the the twin spearhead of the two Terminator units and Land Raiders, because that gives me a lot of threat presence that I can right. put different places. Like the combination of the two Terminator units and Land Raiders, and then the Incendius gives my opponents a lot of choices they have to make. <laughs> Um, that's fair because something's gonna get into your shit and that's why i'm talking about maybe swapping out that lightning claw unit for a standard terminator unit with like power fist thunder hammers and shit um wouldn't be bad but then again um that one (laughs) that one game i played against grady so he had me penned into my corner for like the whole game because i was like table quarters with like the circle in the center or whatever and he had me penned into my corner for like most of the game and then, like, that unit in their Land Raider was able to break out. They disembarked, ran, uh, advanced, advanced reacted, charged something, then consolidated, then advanced reacted again, then did my Blood Angel special reaction to charge that thing. And, like, they made it into Grady's, like, the opposing quarter in like a turn i'm like that that was a fucking speedy unit i was not expecting that speed out of them but just that ability to to run and sweep with the tartaros like man yeah and i mean sure the two things that they got into and completely ate were two tactical squads which like yeah, that's what five Lightning Claw Terminators is going to do to a tactical squad, but, like, you know, you know. It, was, it was just, like, that perfect scenario of they got where I wanted them to get to by eating their, like, preferred prey. <laughs> so, like, you know, yeah. maybe I leave them in there. I don't know. Um, yeah. Or, you know, maybe for sh- shits and giggles, I swap the Crimson Paladins for normal cataphracti that can take a little bit harder hitting weapons because like the crimson paladins are really durable they basically in melee they cannot be wounded on better than a three essentially um with their shields that they have it doesn't affect their saves or anything like that it just reduces the wound rolls of of incoming attacks so they're pretty durable but then after that they're pretty much just cataphracti with power swords so like Granted, the power swords are sunder for whatever good that does, and they are rending on fives instead of sixes. But like, I was finding that my power sword guys are pretty much just bouncing off of pretty much everything. Um, and you can 
only max them out at having two power fists in the unit. Um, even if I even if I took a ten man unit, the maximum number of power fists they can have is two. Um, yeah. and it's power fists or chain fists, and I can't take any like thunder hammers or like I can take other power weapons instead of the sunset blades. But like if I'm taking cataphracti with power axes, why am I taking like you know? Um, All right. So like I'm I'm you know maybe swap them out for a command cataphracti squad so i keep that line still um but then have a little bit harder hitting weapons in there but then again you're losing out on well i guess with the command squad just keeping the weapon skill five so yeah maybe try that out see how that feels um but i just wanted to put the paladins on the table because i i think they took me 50 or 60 hours to paint those fucking things like, I'm not eager to paint another unit of those, even though yeah, I kind of want to. Um, but, yeah. So, like, th- just, you know, learning for me. I definitely felt the benefit of learning and knowing my rules really well. And especially what? with, like, the escalation. It, it, makes, it makes a difference knowing your rules? Well, no, I just mean, like... You know, no, having no. all these rules discussions. You have to have opened your rule book before you play a game. Well, you you joke, Doctor. but there are a lot of games that I either I watched or I was a part of, where I'm like, hey, like you know that you can do X, Y, and Z, or like no, that's not actually how that works. Mm-hmm. And then we explain it, and they're like, oh, shit. So yeah, knowing your rules matters. Yeah, one of my opponents was running Lightning Claw terminators and didn't know he got two extra attacks he thought he only had the one extra attack i'm like yeah no man you've been gimping yourself all weekend then because like you got two attacks extra on those guys each um but like also i I was leaning more into like um getting the reps in by playing the weekly games at the escalation league even though it's only you know seven fifty thousand twelve fifty point games just having that core knowledge of like the core rules and the basic game interactions and how they work was like really beneficial. Like I was, I was pleased with how well I just had like recall and like just getting the, the, the reps and the muscle memory in of like, I don't know that I had to ask anybody any rules questions at all. Even, even with the like discussion I had with Ben beforehand about like hey here's some weird interactions how do we want to play like how are you going to rule on this so i know how to rule on it so we can you know just you know move forward on stuff i don't know that any of those even came up um but yeah just no not really i'm just very appreciative of having those like weekly games even though they're you know lower points values yeah yeah man I mean the the conventions and whatnot are are fantastic fun. I love them. I want to continue them. But I mean the 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 local community is where you're going to get the majority of your gaming in. Yeah. You know, so uh, everything that we learn and you know enjoy there, we're just bringing back here. Mm-hmm. I do know that there are some poor bastards who those events are kind of like all their gaming. Which is unfortunate for them, but you know you, you can see how if they're not studying their rule book most of the time, they might sure. not pick up on all the things. Yeah, I mean, you're right. The, the, those people definitely exist. The, I mean, that 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 is just that is the reality for some gamers. And I don't mean to like you know, uh, I guess make it look bad. Like, no, that's a perfectly valid way to play. Uh, that's uh, that's another good reason why these ev- events exist, so that you can get a lot of gaming in really quick. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, I would say those are the, the that's the smaller percentage of the people involved. I think that most people there have, you know, they have their local communities. Uh, they're going back to you know to you know you know they're going to take the the missions and the, the the rules and stuff that they've learned, and they're going to go back and they're going to share it with their group. Yeah, and for what it's worth, like. A majority of those rules interactions I had were more of things like, oh, well, just in case you didn't know, like, you can actually do this here. 
and like it was me like giving my opponent advice on like hey you know have you thought about doing this oh i didn't know i could do that oh well yeah then definitely like in this situation if i were you i would do this and like whether or not it worked out for them it was a, a tactical choice they didn't know they could have made um sure. Like, it, I can count on one hand the number of times it was like, oh, well, that's not how that works. You can't actually do that. Like, it was more of like, hey, here's more options for you that you didn't know you had, rather than like, no, you're not playing that correctly. Like, which I thought mm. was nice. <laughs> yeah, there that, that did happen from time to time, but that was... <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. that doesn't happen all the time. Oh man, um, yeah, but anyways, like we've got, you know, we're, or I think we're, you know, we've kind of beat this one into the the sure. ground. But you know, all that to everything that we said, just to you know, go back to the point that you know, conventions are super duper fun. Um, I certainly really enjoy them. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't put so much time and effort into them. But like, hopefully, anyone listening to this, if you've ever been on the fence about going to a convention, like you you should definitely give it a shot. Like there's a lot of positives going into an event like that. You get to, you get to see armies that are, you know, really well painted, really well modeled um, that you wouldn't get to see normally. And you get to play against people that, you know, bring a different, you know, a different attitude to the game and, you know, that, or a different you know, strategies to the game that maybe you don't get to see very often. So, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a very worthwhile uh, goal to you know attend these sorts of events. Um, I I have a great time at them, uh, and I hope that everyone who's come to you know Nova or any of my other events uh, has shared that as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Nova next year is going to be bigger and better than ever. We've you know yep. recently gotten the news that they're moving to a, a different venue, like in the, DC proper, the the DC Hilton. Mm -hmm. nice. It's like what two or three times bigger than the. Yeah, it's huge. It is it is much larger. I do not know the percentage, but it is much larger. Um, Nova this year was a, a resounding success. I mean, they had they broke a, a number of their records in uh, you know certain events. I don't know that it was the highest attended overall, but I know that some of their biggest game systems it was their they had their largest showings. Um, so it was very successful just across the board. And you know uh, the the Hyatt Crystal the Crystal City Hyatt has been very good. I've enjoyed both of my you know five day long stays there. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the possibilities that the new venue brings because I mean you, hopefully it means that we can expand, maybe have a little bit more room to ourselves. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Like uh, there's just a lot of opportunity that comes with it. Yeah, because this yeah. time they had both the the uh Hyatt Regency and the Renaissance across the street were both venues for the event this time and like all the halls were maybe not like you know full to bursting but like all the gaming space was used um yeah. in both of the venues and so the the decision to go to a larger venue definitely makes sense um so I'm I'm excited to see what that leads to and and how much bigger it gets yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, don't don't need to belabor that point. Um if you have any questions for us about Nova or any of the mission packs or uh anything like that, if you want help writing a writing a list for an event or um advice about conventions or events or anything like that, uh shoot us a message. Uh Argle Talk Podcast at gmail dot com. A R G E L T A L K podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, we'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, I know for we want to do it this week because if we didn't do it this week, we probably weren't going to do it. We want to do the Nova recap. Nope. Um, but uh, for next next up on the docket, uh, uh, next time on Argle Talk, we're going to be uh, running through a word bearers list for a listener um, that sent us a collection of stuff that he wants us to help him write a list out of um and so we'll see what we all have to say about that and we if you want us to do that for you we'd be happy to um obviously we have um you know both a, a gaming and a narrative uh 
interest in in list writing so you know we'll write you a a good fluffy thematic list that's also not gonna you know get <laughs> get morbed on too bad um so yeah any other questions like that and as always if you want us just to you know tell us to go fuck ourselves you can do that too um but uh leave us th- leave us a comment send us an email um and show us uh, your boobs show us your <laughs> show us your show butthole, us your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> uh and um your morbs you, you, all right yeah that's gonna have to be a t-shirt like show us your butthole and we'll show you the wee wee <laughs> <laughs> um couple spots left for uh call to arms october 7th to 9th uh specifically october 8th for the uh heresy event the clarion hotel yep. in williamsburg virginia i think um, i'm down to i think i'm down to three slots left for yep. the heresy narrative we've got um and I how much is the registration ben how much is the ticket uh, so for, well for uh for the tournaments quote quote uh, uh so heresy um age of sigmar bolt action uh those are uh and and those are going to be a 30 dollar buy-in that does include the convention pass um pre-registration uh is 20 bucks just for the convention um it'll be i think it's 25 day of uh if you are interested in playing in the warhammer army project uh Uh, event that is a two-day event that's a fifty dollar buy-in but a lot of that is going to prize support so Mm yeah yummy Um, yummy old world prize support mm -hmm. so yeah the uh, goblin green you can shake a fist at (laughs) (laughs) so many square bases for 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 that cost but yeah no um, guy but uh that's we're 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 excited looks like the numbers are looking pretty good Mm -hmm. but we would we would love to just knock it out of the park with a uh, with a full house on every event. Yep, and we'll have those yeah. uh, inaugural event. So we you need to have them more Tell your friends, friend. You your parents, bring your friends, parents, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Bring them all. Come out. Come bring out. Your wife, bring your mom. Bring your girlfriend. Bring your mistress. Bring your second family that your main family doesn't know about. Bring your bring your mom, weird whatever. sex doll that everyone that you insist is real, but everyone knows. That's just the plot to Mannequin 2. <laughs> Anyways. But we'll have those links down in the description for you guys. We're going to go ahead and call that there before we start talking about sex dolls more. But uh, we'll see more. you guys next time. Bye.